Does the government work for us or do we work for the government? Are the freedoms that are guaranteed by the Constitution truly guaranteed? Or are they subject to the whims of politicians and bureaucrats and secret central bankers? Tonight, what on earth has the government done to our money? A famous central banker once said, quote, if you give me control of a nation's monetary system, then I care not who writes its laws. In the United States, we have the rule of law. It's the Constitution. The Constitution guarantees that if you own property, which includes money, the government cannot just take it from you or diminish its value. The same Constitution guarantees that the government will not interfere with contracts you've signed and economic agreements you've made. And the same Constitution guarantees a free market economy. And a free market economy is one where producers of goods and services have as few barriers as possible to trade with consumers and no barriers from the government. It's one where the laws of supply and demand, not central government planning, regulate the market. Competition for goods and services is at the core of capitalism. People who advocate for free markets understand that it is competition that drives down prices and encourages producers to create a better product. So why is it that people who advocate for a free market in everything else don't support a free market in money? Ask yourself why we don't allow the government to set the price of shoes or bread or chocolate, but we do allow the government to determine the price or the value of money. The government does this by fixing interest rates, which is the cost of borrowing money. The history of central banking in the United States is a tumultuous one. The intellectual battle between Thomas Jefferson, who wanted no central bank, and Alexander Hamilton, who wanted Soviet-style central planning, has been playing out over the centuries. The battle between liberal economist John Maynard Keynes and free market champion Frederick von Hayek still plays out today. Hayek was convinced that if we were ever again to have decent money, it would not come from the government. It would be issued by private enterprise. And Keynes argued that the government could produce prosperity with more control over our economic choices. We all know now that Keynes was wrong. Central banks are not necessary for a free market. In a free society, banks would have to compete for your business, and consumers would be free to choose a reputable bank. Instead, we have given control of our money to an unconstitutional and secretive Federal Reserve. Instead of supply and demand determining interest rates, like it does with the cost of shoes and bread and chocolate, the Fed dictates the value of money. The Fed would rather we stayed ignorant and disinterested in what it does to the value of our money. It doesn't want us to ask tough questions and deal with harsh realities about interest and credit. The job of the CIA and other intelligence agencies is to steal and keep secrets. Yet we know far more about what our intelligence agencies are doing than we do about what the Federal Reserve does. When private bankers can operate in secret with the authority of the government, they will enrich themselves and lessen the value of money for the rest of us. That is the Federal Reserve, and that is theft, pure and simple. Since the Fed came into existence nearly 100 years ago, the value of the dollar has gone down by 92%. Who would voluntarily stick with a bank that destroyed their savings? But there's hope. Grassroots outrage at the bailouts of AIG and General Motors and the United Auto Workers and others has fueled renewed interest in this topic. And central bankers have no reason to fear sunlight, daylight, into their operations. The modern day Je Thomas Jefferson, Congressman Ron Paul, has been named the chair of the Domestic Monetary Policy Subcommittee of the House of Representatives. A movement of Federal Reserve abolitionists is coalescing, coalescing behind Congressman Paul in support of his efforts to bring more light into the inner workings of the feds. The last time voter rage boiled over into the destruction of the central bank, Andrew Jackson was president, and he reasoned that that bank did nothing but benefit an elite circle of corporate and industrial interests at the expense of those who labor and save. He understood that by centralizing the power of currency into the hands of a private institution, it would inherently be corrupted by the government, that it could be used to finance big government schemes at home and abroad. Sound familiar? In a famous statement, Jackson declared, quote, you are a den of vipers, and I will rout you out. And by God, he did rout them out. And by God, we hope the leaders of the Tea Party today will learn this lesson. 
focus their rage and use it to shine light into the den of vipers at the Fed. Light put upon the government will expose what it has done to steal the value of our money. Exposing government secrets will bring us freedom, and freedom will bring us prosperity. From New York, defending freedom every night of the week. So long, America.